What is the brass anointing number three? It is the anointing that leads to all truths. That's why William Abraham said, if you want to confirm whether somebody displaying an anointing is ordinary anointing or is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is the word test. If you show the person something he's doing wrong in the Bible and he refuses to repent, that person is not converted anything. He's only using the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He has not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He will lead you to all truth. John 14 verse 17 says so. John 16 verse 13 says so. Of course, verse 26 also of John 14. John 14 verse 26. Number 4. What is the bride's anointing? It is the power to overcome in that age. And that power to overcome every age had the, the antichrist spirit. Amen. And in this age, the bride in this age is contending with the pale horse rider in Revelation chapter 6. That fourth horse rider. And the anointing that God has released to counter that spirit of deception is the eagle, flying eagle. Verse 7 of Revelation chapter 4. That anointing is given to you to overcome the deception that is on now. That is the bride's anointing. Number five, the bride's anointing is the hope of resurrection. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 and Romans chapter 8 verse 11 and John chapter 3 verse 5. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The hope of resurrection. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can never go in the rapture. You, there will be no resurrection for you. The first resurrection, which is the resurrection of life, is only for those who have received the Holy Ghost. Any other person, you face the second resurrection to meet the Lord in the white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. And it is not to save you. It is to give you reason why you are entering that lake of fire. That's why he said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, you get the anointing that gives you the hope of glory. Because Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the spirit of Christ, the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, they say you will quicken your mortal body by that same spirit that dwelleth in you. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you enter that grave. There is nothing to quicken you. Grave could not hold him captive because of the spirit that was in him. And grave also cannot hold you captive because that same spirit that resurrected Christ is in you. You have the hope of resurrection. That's why we are not afraid of death. Praise the Lord. Number six, what is the bride's anointing? It is the anointing that comforts. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which my father will send in my name. Why will you have a comforter? Because the Bible says, all that shall live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. There will be a period of temptation. There will be a period of wilderness. But he gives you comfort to go along. That and we need it in these hard times. To comfort us. is the great comforter. Number seven. What is the bride's anointing, it is the spirit of adoption. Hey, Romans 8, 15 says so. And Romans 8, verse 9. Romans 8, verse 9 says, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of adoption, whereby we do what? We cry, Abba, Father. You become his son by adoption because you don't deserve it. You were lost and gone. You belong to Satan. But his mercy found you and made you his son. Not even his servant, but his son. It's a spirit of adoption. You become a heir and joint heir for that matter with Christ Jesus. Number eight. What is the bride's anointing? It is the seal until the day of redemption. Once you are saved, it gives you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Ghost, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Whereby you are sealed 
unto the day of redemption. That's why we say once you are saved, forever you are saved. And you are not saved until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Number nine, it is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, not just anointing. That is the bride's anointing. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 28, 9 and verse 30, he said, whom he did for no, he called. I mean, those whom he predestinates, he called. And those he called, he is the one that called you, he will justify you. The process by which all your sins are washed away. Amen. And then he will glorify that person. Glorification there is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The finished work of salvation is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Number 10, it is the wedding garment. Hey, it is the wedding garment. That parable in Matthew 22, verse uh, 1 up to verse 14, read it, where the gospel, the story goes that they went by the highway when they were rejected. Then he said, go by the highway and compel them to come and they gather both good and bad and the whole, the, the wedding as, uh, feast was furnished and the governor of the feast came for inspection and saw among those that gathered, one man there did not have the wedding garment. And he asked him, how did you find yourself here? Without the wedding garment, what was his response? He was speechless. And I have explained this several times. The denominational Catholic, Anglican, they will have something to say because they will continue to argue with him. So that person is not a denominational person. That person is somebody listening to me now. That person is a member of this church. While others were getting ready because there is nothing that the rest have had and got themselves ready that you didn't hear. So you will have no excuse because you had everything. But you did not have the wedding garment. That song we sang, you are the one that will say, oh, had I known. Certainly. He saw the prostitute outside. That is why the Bible says he was speechless. Oh yes. But Revelation chapter 19 verse 7, 8, 9. The bride has made herself and to her is given that she should be arrayed in white linen, clean, white. And that dress is not the wedding dress you wear here on your wedding dress, in your wedding day. It is the righteousness of the saints in this age. There's the righteousness of the saints in this age. Righteousness is the posture of acceptance before God. The life pleasing before God. Following this expectation in every age. And the dressing of here, it includes spiritual dressing, physical dressing, because it is what is inside that reflects outside. It is, you have a heart of prostitution. Sister, that is why you would like to dress and show your sacred parts. It's inside your heart. It's a prostitute. No, that's the truth. Because every lady is conscious of how you sit down, of how you dress. You know, certain parts should not be seen. And since we say dress very well, it's okay, I will not be naked, but I know what to do. Then they wear body hug, tight themselves, so that this one will come on. So they say, we wear long skirt, they will see long skirt. When you see that, you think they are mommy water. Human body here, fish. Here. People are here hearing as long as much as I'm hammering against fornication here every day. There are still people in this place that they look at me now, look at me now, look at me very well. You are still fornicating, isn't it? Let a fornicator answer me, isn't it? 
One day you will know what I'm saying. It's no joke. Now that thing that you are joking, 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 there will be a time that you will cross the line of mercy. And there will be no return again. God has waited long for you to repent. You are still joking. One of these days you will cross the line of mercy. And you discover you can't come back again to mercy. Because according to Revelation chapter 10, he stands up from the mercy seat. When he stands up before the thunder sounds, mercy is over. Nobody will be saved again. Now he's sitting down there. That's why he's giving you opportunity to come here now. To get yourself dressed. Trim your lamps of revelation. You know the tongue you are speaking is not the Holy Ghost tongue. You know now, you know that the tongue you are speaking, that they told you you are saved, you know you are not saved. Your pastor told you you are saved, but everyone that is saved knows he is saved. Because the Bible tells us, Amen. The people that will not enter, and you read it and you say, fornicators will not make it, effeminate will not make it, lesbians will not make it, homosexuals will not make it, drunkards will not make it, idolaters will not make it. They are written there, and every one of them, you are guilty of them. And your pastor is telling you, you are going to heaven, God loves you. You know, and you are saying, you are saying, oh, right on, pastor, right on, pastor. You know you are not going to heaven, you know it. You know, Ahab knows that he is not right with God. That is why he said, Jehoshaphat, you dress like a king. I'll be behind. That is the reason why you are afraid of death more than anybody else. Because you know if you die, you know where you're going. You know. You know. You know. You know. The worst thing that has happened to you in your life now is that you came to Bride Assembly you had this thing I'm saying now. You have no excuse again. And that's the last opportunity God may be giving you. Especially in these perilous times where nobody knows when you will die. You don't know when this serpent sits. We go and carry the suicide bomb and meet with you. The wisest thing for anybody to do now is to make your election, calling an election, sure. Many are called, few are chosen. When the Bible says, strive to enter. Why did it say strive to enter? I gave you this example. What? I said uh, uh, the message I preached, gospel according to nature. I gave one example among other examples. How come God designed that before a man can pregnant a woman with one seed, one child, how many sperm cells must you have? How many? Eh? 50 something million. If you have only 20 million, you cannot pregnant a woman. Can't you people think, think something? God is speaking the gospel. Many are called. 50 million. Where are they going to? I'm going to heaven. The door is very narrow. So the first person that strive to enter, the first one that enter, a time is going to come, others are struggling. The door is closed. Pam. Only one out of 50 million. Can't you learn something? When Jesus says, strive to enter. If it is so easy like the preachers are making it. To look. God is a good God. Why will he say, strive to enter? He said there are two ways. In John chapter 7, and verse 13, he said, one way is straight and narrow. The gate is narrow. The road is straight. He said, another one. He said, the gate is wide. The way is broad. He said, and many there be that enter that way. That way is the Christian way. They said, but the other one with a straight way, narrow gate, he said, there be few that find it. Few that want to serve God in true holiness. Few. 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 Especially in this age when worldliness has taken over the church. That is why we need overcoming power. The Holy Ghost is that overcoming power. That will give you power to conquer worldliness. That will give you power to conquer sin. It is easy for you to say no to sin. That will kill that serpentine nature inside of us. That will transform a sinner.
to a saint. And when that power is upon you, then you become an atomic bomb walking. You are a carrier of fire. Because Satan, the accuser of the brethren, will look at you. He has no reason not to bow when you are around. That is the Holy Ghost we are coming here for. That will help you to live a life pleasing before God. No human being can live a life pleasing before God. Except God lives in you. To cause you, give you the ability to live a life pleasing before him. I spend so much time talking. So that you will know what we are here to do. Some people run to come here because they are looking for power. Whatever you are looking for, God will give you. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Whatever is your reason that brought you to this program. Some people have known that there is a lot of gifts in this church. They know there is a fire here. The reason they are coming is if I have half the anointing that is on this prophet in this church. I know I have made it. My oh my. I have made it. Before this year ends, I will write forecasts. What are you saying? Eh? Eh? Igbo? Eh? If I have half the gift you have, oh my. Hey, hey. Praise the Lord. If that is the kind of anointing you want, it is here. You will receive it. Because this rain must fall. Who is ready for that rain? Who is ready for the rain? Stand up if you are ready for the rain. 